Hey, what's up? Leron here. And in this video, we're going to paint a bit of an unusual one, a night scene, which I don't normally do. Uh, and as I'm seeking to constantly challenge myself in watercolor and strive to try out the scenes that aren't as obvious that you would maybe disregard as unsuitable, I do want to try them out. More interiors also is something I want to do. So you can see here, uh, night scene, cars, junction and everything about it the values and how they are spread around the painting is different there's a beautiful reflections here in the building so a lot to um to talk about and a lot to see in this process i hope you're going to enjoy this one let me show you how it's done so i skipped the drawing stage here we're going to go straight to the painting just because i actually haven't filmed it uh, i wasn't planning even on filming this process but uh, i had a hunch it's going to be an interesting one so i'm starting with a sort of french ultramarine um, muted blue i don't want it to be too strong look at the sky i mean they're not too saturated uh, i want to keep the saturation for the street lights street lamps you know cars and signs and so on now the thing is look at the buildings they are way more gray and muted so what I'm doing is painting the sky around the buildings and then what I'm going to do is vis revisit the buildings with some more muted paint. So here I am adding a bit of yellow, a bit of red and slowly uh, muting the mixture I have to get that... Um, that more that grayer feeling on the buildings I actually haven't even gotten enough of it I could go a little more now as I move downwards I'm actually starting to warm it a little more because look at that beautiful uh, reflection on the building what happens there is you get the sunset to reflect on these they, they have very uh, you know the windows are uh, I believe they're not transparent but even if they are they're very reflective so you get this area with strong warm colors and the entirety of the painting is bl is is cooler uh, and that's what pushes the viewer to look at this section so I'm making sure to add enough warmth there it's really important to actually all the bottoms of the buildings even the buildings on the right that have the reflections of the other buildings on them there is still a, a hint of warmth i want to portray there okay now back to the sky hopefully that part of the wash didn't dry and we won't get too harsh of an edge uh, and now we can continue with the blue the the cooler texture um in a sorry mixture for the rest of the street okay now <coughs> what i'm going to do is go over everything in the bottom second pretty much uh, because it's all dark it's all darker except for the headlights and all of those details that I'm not even going to bother painting around because I'm going to use opaque paint. It's all pretty much dark. So I'm just trying to make sure that I get it to look kind of right uh, and I move on with the wash. And notice how when you look at this, you're immediately uh, attracted to that warm spot in the middle where you get the sunset reflecting. So And hopefully once I start layering in on top of that, the rendering of the windows, you get the you'll get the impression of this is a reflective surface okay now the bottom part is a little darker so i thought why wait for the next wash let's start establishing that now so i'm just starting to put in a darker mix that's also all of my three primary colors now the colors i'm using are french ultramarine yellow ochre and quinacridone rose or quina any kind of quinacridone will do uh, all of these are M grams, if, if I'm not mistaken, maybe just the red isn't, the quinacridone rose isn't, uh, but the French ultramarine and yellow ochre are definitely M grams, very soft, it's paints that I really enjoy using. Now I'm also establishing the crosswalk, but just very gently, and I'm going to, on top of that later on, add some more uh, once it dries, obviously. So. Uh, yeah, and this the corner is also really important to close that off. And now we can move on to the next wash. Now here I'm starting with what I think is one of the more interesting sections of the painting, which is the reflection of the building uh, of another building on this building. Now this part, I hope it doesn't bore you, but I wanted to include it to show you just how when you want to render these small details you actually have to do the work so um if you and i'm i'm also going to include obviously a link to the reference photo and a link to my to my drawing stage and everything so if you open the photo there and you zoom in you look at the reflections it's basically the squares between the um edges of the windows i don't know how to call it so you have the windows the glass and then they have this metal frame around them now the metal frame is um 
it's reflecting light or it's just naturally lighter. So you get a gap between all of these windows, which causes this. So what I'm effectively doing is drawing squares. What is important is the edge. Notice how the squares in the contours, so to speak, of the building that is reflecting on this building, they're very uh, interesting in their shape. They're curved, they're bent, and what's beautiful about it is that it actually um, informs us about the shape of the glass. The glass may be a little curved, which causes this effect. This will often happen next to the frame itself. Uh, and I love this effect. I love what it, the way it looks. Um, and I decided to, to paint these negatively, um, to paint the, the frames negatively, instead of first putting in uh, one big shape for the reflection and then cutting it into smaller ones using, you know, white, my white gel pen or, or this kind of a thing, I decided to, uh, to start like that. And I want to show you how it, these processes can take time, you know, the first wash uh, took me, I don't know, like two minutes maybe, uh, maybe a little more, and this entire section alone took me about two minutes just up till now, but it's going to be even longer. So <coughs> the first wash is, it can be fairly faster and, and, and even easier in some cases, but these stages require some focus and I cannot say just how many times I've seen people work way too fast. So take your time, work slowly. When you render out these small details, it, it, it can take time, okay? Uh, now, one thing I'm paying attention to really carefully is to preserve the same level of wetness because if not, I'm going to start getting some backgrounds and I'm going to start getting some um, areas that dry unevenly and I, d I just wanted to avoid it. It's not the end of the world, but I wanted to avoid it. And that also means mixing a large enough of a puddle uh, in your palette, okay? Because that that's one of the things that are really important for not running out of pa paint because then if you have to mix again, then you will have to uh, put water again, put paint again, you may get a different water to paint ratio and then you won't get things drying properly, okay? This is a bit of a slower process, so hopefully you'll bear with me. Uh, this process in general, there is no time lapse, nothing. I just go over it uh, real time, real speed, okay? Uh, now, as for this shape, I'm starting to branch out lower uh, because I want to c connect these reflections with the trees and the darker sections under the building. My one mistake here is that I'm going over the car below. And I'm going to fix that in just a moment. So here I made a mistake and I realized that I made a mistake. So I just grab a piece of tissue and I dab it right out. Uh, and you'll see I, it ended up working out nicely. Okay, so I got a bit lucky because very often you won't be able to lift as much. Uh, and thankfully I'm using a relatively... Um, relatively wet mix, I would say, even though it looks a little dark, it's relatively wet. Now, just to give you a quick tip about these evening and night scenes, this isn't really fully night, it's more evening, but you can already see all the headlights and the street lamps and everything, so it's kind of night. Uh, one big tip I'll give you is the initial wash is going to be darker, okay? You want to establish the darkness from the beginning a little stronger. Uh, I think it's really important because if I would go too light, then I'll have to go back again and cover some areas up. You don't want that. You want to, whatever unites the entire painting, you want to finish in one go, which is the underpainting, the initial wash, the first layer, whatever you want to call it, uh, the first wash. Um, so that you want to finish in one go if possible, because that ties everything together. Uh, so this is why it's really important to go a little darker and you have the freedom to go a little darker. The challenge is going to come later on when you actually have to make the distinction between the different shades of darkness. Okay, that's the, the hard part really. This is why I think, um, the, you know, night scenes are a little more challenging because it's very easy when everything is obviously lit. You have the strong sunlight, the strong shadows, you know exactly how to render a subject. And I'm all for choosing these references to paint. There's no need to torture ourselves. Um, with night scenes, however, you have to really pay attention to the nuances within the darks. So you have a medium, a mid value to dark and all of the range in between, it's very easy to disregard these. It's very, it's easier for me to pay attention to nuances on the, let's say, very light to medium than it is on the medium to dark. Uh, I don't know if that's just me, but uh, that's at least how I experienced this. Uh, now I'm starting to render the details of the building. So we have a couple of rows of windows, if you will. Uh, should have went with a bit of a 
gray for the building more than I have. Um, it ended up being kind of similar to the sky in a way, uh, but it's fine. Still, there's going to be a good distinction. Once we add the frames of the windows up top, you'll see it's going to be a lot of interesting things. Um, and now you see that this building has a very interesting shape. It's these curved um, circles that wrap around its corner, uh, kind of like rings closing on its corner. And it's it's a it's a tough one to render. And I don't do it perfectly. And if if I would have taken a bit more time, then it would have been nicer. But you see how the gist of it, I think, is conveyed well. The The challenge was the reflection of the ring on the building. So you basically get the ring, and then you get the, the reflection of the ring on the building. And you have to remember that the upper rings, we see their bottom sides, and they appear to be a little more curved, while the bottom rings flatten. Okay, that's because of perspective. It's actually third point perspective. Um, so that's some I want I don't want to go into that because that's a little complex, uh, but it may be a good topic for a future video uh, to talk about the uh, what what uh, circles and ovals look like in perspective. Uh, you get to see a similar thing when in my uh, cylinders uh, cylinder sketching tutorials, like the last one one before that. Uh, you do get to see how this works, but not really the nuance of it. I haven't really gotten into so. Uh, perhaps it'll be a good topic for another video, uh, but I'm trying to to just sketch it as I see it. As you see, and the lower it goes, the the more the reflection is in the same line as the actual ring. Uh, sorry about the camera going out of focus here and there. Uh, hopefully it will work out better next time, and uh, the next couple of stages. So here I'm adding a bit of blue, and I'm rendering again these darker. Uh, I don't even know what these are, maybe in between floors or something like that. There aren't any windows there, obviously. Uh, I think, you know what, I may be mistaken. These may be just a different type of in windows. Um, these th three structures I wanted to paint for a while now. Every time uh, we go there around evening and, and I see them, I love that reflection uh, on the buildings and I really wanted to portray it. So. Uh, I'm happy that I finally got the opportunity. Maybe an interesting one to try for a bit of a larger one. Um, definitely a challenging scene. Definitely a challenging scene. Now I got a comment that this uh, up top on the this building, it's actually an antenna, but someone <laughs> says that they feel bad for the person there. Uh, it kind of looks like a person, you know, raising one knee up, uh, but it's not. <laughs> if there, if it was a person, they'd be much tiny. Like this, if this is a person, it's a giant because the, it's the size of a few floors doesn't make sense. Uh, so yeah, sorry if now you can't unsee it and all you see is a person. Wasn't my intention. Uh, but in any case, yeah. Now I'm pretty much done with rendering the horizontal lines on the buildings. I'm gonna start adding in some details, but in a minute you'll see me do something interesting, which is to rotate. Sorry, bumped the mic. Uh, rotate the paper. You'll see it's. I think it's really interesting how you can use the. And and it's funny when I film, I don't move the paper too much. But when I'm actually painting for myself, I'm picking it up, I'm changing its angles to help the paint flow. It's one thing that is kind of lost in these tutorials. Um, I hope to convey more of that in the future, but I find it really helpful to really tilt the paper at a strong angle sometimes and hold it in my hand. I'll literally hold it on the board, I mean, obviously. I mean, the paper is taped to the board and I'm holding the board with my left hand and I'm drawing with my right hand. It actually looks really... Uh, the result looks much better sometimes you get better flow like this because I do want to to freely manipulate the angle but when I'm filming I'm not gonna do that obviously because it's gonna um, maybe disorient you and um, I don't know I just didn't want to do much of it now here's the thing everything here is still darker so I'm just covering the whole thing up pretty much but at this stage I can afford to paint around the, the headlights at this point it's okay um, the area I need to cover isn't that large, so I'm fine with that. Uh, we have the car here on the right, and I'm actually going to leave light because it is white. Um, so that makes sense. And I'm trying, if you can't see its shape, that's fine. Uh, but try read, the, it's the, the contours of it. And you see the tires on the right. Maybe soon it'll make sense. Um, you have to really visualize shapes when you paint, like really visualize them. It's not easy at all. Um, and that's one of the skills uh, you want to develop. Uh, now I'm going to work around the crosswalk. That's now it is important uh, to leave it as a as a lighter section perhaps, but already it's pretty dark. 
when I do these daylight scenes, uh, the the crosswalk is pretty much paper white. Here, notice there's nothing paper white. I covered the whole thing up with a relatively dark wash, not more than mid value, but still relatively dark, uh, and and pretty much it's all covered with even two washes. You know, just the sky is left uh, with the first wash. So. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's just you want to start with a bit of a darker one from the get-go. Now, the, this crosswalk adheres to perspective. Again, all of these lines converge to the same vanishing point somewhere way on the right. Okay, now I'm rotating the paper as I mentioned. I'm going to use my super thin Escoda brush. I love this one. It's a sword brush, which are really useful. Great capacity uh, in very thin lines. And I'm putting in those... Um, I'm actually expressing the window panes now. Uh, so here we go. And this is much easier to do sideways. So, and again, usually I, I won't even rotate it just not to hurt the immersion of the video, but this time I felt like I have to. Uh, otherwise I'd get really wonky lines and I didn't want that. Now notice how that in uh, conjunction with the reflection of the windows on the uh, larger building, that really works nicely. Now you can tell that what you see is a reflection between these frames. Okay, and I'm going to improve upon it even more uh, in just a few moments. Now everything is dry. Okay, there was some drying time. Um, I tried letting this one dry um, without the hair dryer because I find that it sometimes weakens the tape. I wanted to let it dry a little more naturally and I'm painting the car. Now the car itself, uh, not, there, it's just one big blob of slightly darker value. Um, I may have gone a little too dark, but that's fine. Um, and there isn't too much to leave in terms of highlights, which is why you see me covering the whole thing up. Uh, later on, I will put on it some of the reflected lights you see, and I'm going to zoom in on the reference. You'll see it's going to be a really nice section uh, of the video. You have to remember with these scenes, a big part of it is adding the the white colors, the, the very light highlights later on, because it's a night scene, obviously. Um, sometimes you may use masking tape, uh, or masking fluid rather, um, to leave these highlights. I'm perfectly fine with that. That's not something I enjoy as much. I, I do want to try it out more again in the future. I always say this. Um, so I may try it in the future. My way is to add it later on opaquely. You can leave it with masking uh, fluid or whatever means you want. But an essential part of night scenes is those highlights because that's what happens at night. You get these street lights, you get the headlights of the cars, the tail lights, everything. Um, it just becomes a more important part of the painting. So you'll see, and I'm, I'm going to tell you when I make the switch. When I finish rendering the darker details, I'm going to make a switch and move on to completely uh, opaque light colors. Uh, not much left, just this car at the front. Um, and by the way, uh, I didn't switch uh, reference, but I'm going to show you later on. So this car on the right, it's very interesting. Sorry that you can't see this, but I used two reference photos for this painting. Uh, one is everything you see uh, basically here and the other one is this car that I'm painting right now. Look at this reference that you currently see on the top right corner. It's this car but before it made the turn. Now I snapped a couple of pictures one after the other and I really liked how this car looked like after it got closer to us. So I essentially merged the two together. That's something I'll very often do if I snap multiple pictures. I'll find the one that looks best for the entire environment but I may borrow some elements from other cars in that in, uh, from other pictures, sorry, in that same uh, photo stream, if you will. So I took like maybe, I don't know, five to ten pictures of this scene because I liked it so much. I wanted to make sure I capture enough details. Um, and yeah, you're going to see as soon as this car gets closer to us, that's the actual reference it's based on, which is why you don't see it here. Uh, and again, feel free to invent your own stuff. I know many people don't invent stuff because it's just hard. It's not easy. Um, but if you do have several references, merge them all together, add some interest, you know, ideally I should have put a, a, a car even closer to us. And that's actually one of the weak points of this painting is that there is a clear focal point, but I just would like to have more contrast in terms of size. So I'd actually take the car that you see on the right and get it really close to us just to make it more interesting, okay? Uh, now what you saw me do is clean the brush really well with some tissue because for using opaque paint, you want it to be like bone dry. 
um, because I don't want to get water into the tubes um, and I'm picking the paint right out of the tubes. Now notice how I'm starting to put these reflections in and I zoomed in on the reference and you can see all the details. That's really nice. Uh, because the cars move fast, because of the their shapes, you get these very linear uh, highlights on their sides very often. And this really helps with conveying their speed as well. You see I'm trying to do these uh, to pull the brush uh, horizontally to get these to look like they move. Now here's the car that this is based on. Now she, it took the turn and it's closer to us. Now notice what I'm doing here. There is a beautiful X or a cross or kind of uh, a line of highlight. I'm adding that in. I love that feeling. It can be from a wet uh, windshield or that we see the car through because I took this picture through a windshield. Uh, it could be due to many different factors, but I love to have these lines cross the highlight. And it is visible in the uh, reference photo. So it just makes it look nicer. It's the same as uh, stretching the highlight of a moving car that moves really fast. You stretch that red from the taillight or the, the, the headlight even. Uh, I do this for the street lights as well. You know, sometimes you get the, these lines forming. Uh, I don't know the physical explanation. I actually knew it in the past, but I forgot. I learned it in school uh, of why the light kind of breaks in straight lines. Um, so it's really interesting to convey that in the painting. Uh, so here we go. Now, this is basically going through a series of different colors. I'm going to start with white, as you see. Then I'm going to move into uh, some yellow and some red and blue and green, sorry. Uh, all opaque, all beautiful. Uh, this is what's going to give this a sense of being an evening scene, if you will. Okay, because... Um, it's not that dark, to be honest. It is darker, but it's not that dark. But once you get these highlights and then it really works. Now, one more interesting thing, look at the reflection. The highlights of this car especially, they reflect strongly in the crosswalk. Uh, because this area of the asphalt is painted, it's actually more reflective and it's lighter. So that even adds to that. Uh, so we get these beautiful reflections specifically being stronger on the crosswalk. Um, actually, I could add a bit of yellow to the asphalt as well because that's where it's really visible. Now, one more important element is these lines, um, you know, um, marking the lanes, the lane lines. They are really important because they will convey the perspective and it's really important to get them squeezed properly. Very often we end up doing them way too curved when you actually, not way too curved, but way larger, you actually need a very tight angle in the apex of the curve um, to convey that it all converges to, that it's flat, that we're looking at a flat surface at an angle. We're looking at the street level at an angle, okay? We're not looking at it from above, so it's not gonna be a rounded, super rounded curve. It's a very tight curve, okay? I hope that makes sense, that's really important. Um, when I narrate these after the fact, again, uh, sometimes it's hard to convey some of the things I'm doing uh, as opposed to being able to point at the paper. Uh, that can sometimes help. Now you see I'm adding some of the borders between the panes uh, with some opaque paint very gently, just a few here and there uh, to add this distinction. I may strengthen this later on or just a moment. Uh, bring in more uh, opaque paint. Uh, just like I did on the left with negative painting, here I knew that I'm not going to do that, so I'm adding them in later on, okay? Two ways of doing this. Both can work uh, depending on what process you enjoy and uh, what look you enjoy too, because they do look a little different, okay? Now I'm just thinking, where do I need more white? I'm putting it there because once I'm, I put the white away, I'm going to move on to other colors, okay? Um, now, so you see, it's a bit hard to see in the video, but open the, the photo itself and you'll see there, is, there are these small, tiny lights on the these darker sections that, I don't know, I thought they looked nice, so I decided to add them in. Very often, you'll just see something, you'll like it, and you'll um, play on that and you'll add it in, even if you don't necessarily understand what it is. Um, and I think that's just really cool. That's the best part about painting. You can do whatever you want, really. Uh, if you're doing some more accurate work, you don't always get to do that. But with painting and impressionism, you get to do that as freely as you want. Now, I'm adding yellow around the white highlights. Look at the reference photo. Some lights are, they appear to be a little more yellow. But if you look at the, the epicenter of the highlight, 
it's actually white it's very very light it's almost paper white uh, the sometimes the color of the light comes not from the heart of it but from the something that surrounds it okay so very often the center will be white but the outer kind of rim around it is going to be red or it's going to be yellow like in this example um, which is why I did it this way I also use the yellow to add the license plates on the cars and now we're switched to uh, red now what's cool is usually I just use a bunch of opaque paints because I love it but in this scene you actually see all of these paints there is red there is there are all of these colors are present there so I'm essentially not just making them up which is really nice um, the red for the signs for all sorts of small details uh, for the tail lights really important uh, I kind of messed up that car's shape in my opinion but that's fine um, and lastly I will pull out some uh, opaque green the pale green I'm gonna show it to you later on when concluding it's really one of my favorite colors in a way um, it's just so, or maybe I don't show it in this video, so sorry, but it's Pale Green by Shinhan PWC. You'll see it in just a moment. Um, here it is, and it's great for the green lights and the, the traffic signs and everything. Uh, but in any case, yeah, this is pretty much it. I really hope you enjoy this one. Uh, I'm going to now uh, sign it, and then we'll conclude and talk a bit about it. So this one is done and signed. All that's left to do is remove the tape and let's hope that we got a nice little edge here. We didn't have too many leaks. Uh, I tried to really tighten the tape a little more uh, than usual. And so you see a bit of paint leaked here, but that's fine. Again, if you were gonna add a white frame, you're gonna get rid of it. And what I'd like to do is show it to you up close because there are some really neat details. So here we go and check this out. And maybe later I'll also show you pictures uh, because they're a bit of a higher quality. But I think here's what we got. I especially love the way this car turned out. Notice the angled lines across the, the headlights uh, and also the these lines representing the movement. It's really important because it is noticeable. Uh, even if you look at the reference, you see this movement in the lights of the cars. Uh, but that's the final detail. What's more important is the overall scene, the composition, look at this building reflecting there. That's one of the best parts, uh, in my opinion, one of the parts I enjoy doing the most, by the way, and you saw me carefully rendering these squares. This is fun for uh, occasionally to do, you know, uh, to really just focus on the shapes you see. Uh, not too much effort that went into the crosswalk or anything like that. I don't care about these as much, but these lines are incredibly important. Now, very often you'll get these lines to be too wide and they need to be really narrow to convey that this is the horizon line because they're going to converge to the horizon line. They can't go up, okay? Uh, so this is really important. Again, same for this one. Uh, but in case, yeah, this is it. Now we can uh, wrap it up face to face. So this is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and hopefully you've seen me, uh, the way I add the highlights, especially near the end. I know that's something a lot of people have been asking me about uh, how to do. That's actually the easiest part with lots of opaque paint. And as you see, I love to utilize the uh, white, the yellow, green, red, all of these colors. I think they look really good and add to it. And besides, I've seen them in the scene. So I wanted to include them. It's not just my imagination. Notice the impact that this warm temperature has here compared to the rest of the coolness of the painting okay this is really important to have in mind remember contrast contrast in the temperatures contrast in the values contrast in the sizes of shapes uh, and yeah all of the rest is just final touches so hopefully you enjoyed this one don't forget to subscribe and also like and comment down below let me know your thoughts on this liking the video really helps me reach more people so I would really really appreciate that if you want to learn how to paint like this be sure to check out the frustration free watercolor course link is always in the description box below and I will see you again in the next vid real soon.